Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mini Clinics with Mitch. My name is Mitch Braley. I'm a member of Rackable Canada's national development team coming to you from my basement on behalf of Rackable Canada. Last week, we talked about the importance of leg strength and leg endurance in Rackable. I said that my opinion was legs are the most important muscle group in racquetball, and I certainly didn't hope to give the impression that that means you can ignore or not give as much time to other muscle groups. So this week we're going to talk about something else that's extremely important, and that is having a strong core. Now, a common misconception that I think a lot of people have, and this included me up until a few years ago, is that your core simply consists of your ab muscles. And when you think of having a strong core, it just means that you have six-pack abs. And that's certainly not the case. It encompasses so much more than that. Uh, I have the diagram here that highlights some of the areas that are involved in the core, and that is your hips, and your pelvis, your mid and your lower back, your obliques. And I've seen one definition that talks about it as being any muscles that connect to the spine for strength and support. Now, as for the importance of having a strong core in racquetball, our core is responsible for transferring forces between our limbs, our upper body, and our lower body. So it's going to play a role in almost any movement you're making on the racquetball court. And I talked last week about how power doesn't come from our arms, big biceps or triceps, and legs play a huge role in that. Well, your core plays just as big of a role as well in terms of how you're rotating through the ball. And another big portion, whether or not you're a racquetball player, but Strengthening your back is going to help reduce soreness and injury that you might sustain um, in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, if you're a racquetball player, any other sort of athlete, but I know back pain is such a common occurrence for people, especially as they get older. So strengthening your core is a great way to help prevent that. And I really can't stress the importance of pain prevention and injury prevention enough, especially in our lower backs. In this day and age, so many of us have jobs where we're sitting hunched over at a computer with poor posture. I'm guilty of that myself. And this puts a ton of strain on the lower back. And even in jobs that involve being on your feet all day or manual labor, all it really takes is one wrong movement and you can tweak your back and be dealing with the pain for weeks or months or even years. And having a strong core and a strong back is a great way to hopefully A, prevent that injury altogether, but B, helps speed up the recovery process and mitigate some of the pain you might experience as a result. So whether or not you're a racquetball player or an athlete, Having a strong core is just so beneficial in so many different ways that are going to benefit your life on and off the court. All right, so I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter than previous weeks, just because people tend to get sick of my voice pretty quickly. So we're going to dive right into it, starting up with a couple of really popular core exercises, some of you are probably familiar with, uh, most likely the plank on the left side, the side plank, not so much, but starting with the plank, you can see the idea here is I am propped up on my forearms. That's what I've always considered to be a proper plank position. And uh, I have my feet uh, slightly spaced apart. You can keep them together. You can space them out a little bit to make it a little bit easier. But the idea here is I'm keeping everything super tight, super flex, especially within my legs and my glutes. And uh, of course, my core here, my abs, my lower back. I'm staying as stable as possible and I want to be really straight. I don't have my butt in the air. I don't have it sagging. And uh, plank is one of those exercises you can uh, hold for as long as you want. You can hold for 30 seconds and rest for 10 seconds, uh, looking at some of the interval training and the bad ideas we talked about last week. But there's all sorts of different ways that you can play with it and challenge yourself to try and do it as long as possible. And its cousin is the side plank. And this is really going to work those oblique muscles in here. So again, I'm very straight, as you can see, propped up. And as I am propped up, I'm flexing on my muscles again, keeping everything super, super tight. I'm not loose. I'm not, uh, again, pushing my hip too far up. I'm not letting it sag too far down. And it really, like I said, targets those oblique muscles in here, as opposed to the plank, which tends to work uh, more inside the core and that lower and that mid back, uh, along with inside your, your pelvis and your hips and your groin. Another exercise here that probably won't be new to anybody are crunches. They're super, super common, probably the most well-known ab exercise. And there's a reason they're so popular and they are very effective and very simple. A couple different variations here that I'm demonstrating, but really important key is I have my legs bent here and I have my feet planted firmly on the ground. Uh, sometimes if you're starting out and don't quite have the core strength build up, a good way is to put some weight on your feet so they're not uh, coming up in the air as you're coming up. So you want them to stay planted firmly on the ground or you can even have somebody uh, press down on them for you. But uh, 
The tougher variation here that I have shown is having my arms crossed across my chest. That's uh, one of the more difficult ways to do it, but a little bit easier is having my arms extended out to my sides, but I'm not coming all the way up and trying to touch my chest to my knees or to my legs, which is often more for do as a sit up because when you do come up that far, you get a bit of a rest period at that peak point and you don't want to do that. You don't want to be resting. You want your abs to constantly be under stress during this exercise to make them a little bit more difficult. So that's why you can see I'm not coming up all the way, I'm coming up, I'm getting down quickly and then uh, I'm hashing out those reps. And uh, again, whatever you feel comfortable with, we talked about last week, some of the ways to structure the workouts uh, with your legs. So when you're looking at something like crunches, where you can do 10 sets of, or three sets of 10, or three sets of 15, whatever you feel is appropriate, just enough that you can get that burn and really feel it start to work your abs. Dead bugs are a lesser known exercise. I think they're starting to get a little bit more popular in recent years. I've been probably doing them for really only about maybe four or five or so, but they're a terrific core exercise and they're super effective. Uh, I tried to take a couple of different angles here just to demonstrate them best because they can be a little bit difficult to describe. But as you can see, I'm lying flat on my back. I have that 90 degree angle formed with my legs raised. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend a leg out while extending the opposite arm back behind myself, as you can see. And this is great for targeting the oblique area. It targets the, the groin as well within that pelvis and the hips. And it also keeps the abs under stress the entire time. So I talked about that with the crunches, how you didn't want to come up too far because it gives you a bit of a rest period. Well, this is great with the dead bugs. The entire time you're in this pose, you're going to find that uh, it really does uh, burn your abs right here. Uh, and it does your lower back as well. You want to be flexing that, but you're really going to feel it in those abs. So you got abs, you got obliques, you got groin, you got lower back, as long as you're keeping it flexed and tight. Uh, so it's a really, really good exercise, and uh, there's a reason it's starting to become more popular uh, as of late. Leg raises are very simple, but they're also very effective. I'm showing a couple variations here with my arms on my chest to start with, and I'm going to move them down so that my arms are straight out by my sides, which is a little bit tougher. But this targets especially the lower abs right here, the groin. Uh, and even the lower back as well, but you find after even 10, 11, 12 reps or so, you're really going to start to feel that burn right in those lower abs. So this is a super easy one to start doing uh, and to make it even a little bit more challenging, which I haven't demonstrated here is to even prop yourself up between a couple of chairs or be hanging from a pull-up bar and then do the leg raise from a hang position as well, which is even more difficult than lying on the floor here. Spider-Man's might not be the correct term for these. Uh, I'm not entirely sure myself, but that's what I refer to them as. And regardless, it is a awesome exercise. Really good for targeting the obliques and the groin again, along with those hip muscles. And it works the abs as well because you're in this prone uh, push-up position the entire time. But what you can see I'm doing is I am raising one leg and trying to basically bring it to uh, a 90 degree, so to speak. There's a 90 degree angle behind my knee. I'm trying to bring it up and touch my leg basically to the back of my arm, my tricep here. Uh, as much as I can, I don't quite get there. I'm not terribly flexible, but I also want to make sure that I'm staying as flat as possible here. I'm not letting my butt uh, shoot up into the air or sag down. I'm also not letting my hips uh, move from side to side. I'm trying to keep it as stable as possible here in this column. But this is another really difficult one. Uh, even doing, uh, you know, 10 reps or so, you're going to start to feel it. It's really hard to hold that position uh, for any amount of time. And then uh, throwing in this movement with it too makes for a really great core exercise. So you'll get a lot of benefit out of it. Now, earlier when I talked about the importance of having a strong lower back just to prevent injury in your day-to-day -day life, this exercise here, the Superman, is probably the best way to do that. So you can see I start in a, a lying down prone position and then I raise my, my legs. So I even have my upper thigh and my quads up off the ground. It can be a little tough to see because the shorts are loose and hanging down, but they're not touching at all. And then I'm also raising my arms and then my chest off the ground too. So the only part of my body that's really in contact with the ground is my hips, my pelvis area here, and then some of my lower abs. And I'm flexing my back the entire time. So you'll feel 
the burn in your abs. You're going to feel it in, you know, even in your shoulders and your legs just from holding them up that entire time. But it's the lower back that's really targeted here. And this is an awesome way to strengthen your lower back. I can't say enough good things about this exercise. And just like the plank, it's something that you can try and hold for as long as possible and just challenge yourself and see if you can hold it one second longer each time you do it or five seconds longer, whatever the case is, or you can do it for 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, repeat that. But uh, as long as you're doing it in some way, shape or form, you're gonna notice that your back's gonna get uh, a heck of a lot stronger and it's just an awesome exercise to incorporate into your training. So those are just a few exercises I wanted to show you and a few important notes, just like we looked at with leg strength. As always, proper form is crucial. So if you need to film yourself doing all the exercises first, if you're not familiar with them and take a look back just to make sure that you're doing it properly. If you're not sure yourself, find someone in your network, whether it's a personal trainer or somebody that's a bit more familiar with some of these exercises already and have them take a look at what you're doing to just make sure that you're doing it correctly. It just helps prevent injury. And again, as always, if you do feel any pain that isn't just the burn from doing a strenuous exercise, it probably means you're either doing it wrong or have an injury that you maybe you're aware of it maybe you're not but you don't want to do anything that's going to result in you getting more injured or coming away feeling any pain besides just the soreness of a really good tough workout and as always i'd like to conclude these videos with a brief recap so we talked about how the core is involved in almost all movements within racquetball so making sure that yours is strong is very important and when i talk about the core it's not just your ab muscles, it involves so much more than that. We looked at the lower back, the mid back, the obliques, the pelvis, the hips, and uh, any set of muscles that is connected to and supports the spine. So having a strong core is gonna help increase your power, which everybody likes, your stability, and it's also going to help prevent injury, which you're gonna thank yourself for uh, later. And even if you aren't training for racquetball, your body will thank you for strengthening your lower back just from our day-to-day -day lives, we put those backs under so much strain and so much stress. So reward them by strengthening them and making sure you're taking care of them to keep them healthy. And as always, make sure that you're using proper form. Again, that's all about injury prevention and getting the most you can out of every exercise that you're doing. That's all I have for today. My name is Mitch Braley. I'm a member of Rackable Canada's national development team. On behalf of Rackable Canada, thanks so much for tuning in. Take care, stay safe.